what it is. Pittsburgh heads to Arrowhead, where Casey's a slight favorite, part of that due to their seventh-ring scoring defense, which led the NFL by forcing 33 turnovers this season. They are opti- uh, opportunistic, folks. But it won't be easy because the Killer Bees have been swarming, lighting it up against the Finns. Big Ben has two TDs. Antonio Brown had a pair. And Le'Veon Bell set a Steelers franchise postseason record with 167 yards against Miami. They're unreal, that offense, Max. Yeah. Who's the most important player, though, of those three against the Chiefs? Easy to say the quarterback. Or the wideout, who's maybe had statistically the best prime since Jerry Rice. Mm-hmm. But the answer is actually Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell is the best running back in the game by such a measure. Apologies, Zeke fans, because he's a beast. But it ain't close. When Le'Veon Bell is on the field, he is like two standard deviations better than the next running back. And he is one of those guys where whether or not he goes down in history this way, you know, Ladanian Tomlinson at his best, Marshall Falk at his best, you know, Barry Sanders at his best. There are some guys you see you go, that is as good as it, that's as good as I've ever seen. And the thing about Le'Veon Bell in this game, he's weatherproof. You want him to catch, you want him to run, you want to line him up anywhere. Mm-hmm. He averaged yeah. for the first time in history over 100 yards on the ground and 50 yards catching th- uh, uh, per game through the course of the season. He can control the clock, he can catch passes, he can do every single thing you're going to need to do to win this game at Arrowhead? I mean, this dude is, you know, I know in a quarterback league, it is, it is, uh, you know, it is unorthodox to say the least to pick anyone other than the quarterback. But in this case, the answer is, if you want the Steelers to win the game, Le'Veon Bell, he's the guy who has to come up big. I'm a little biased on this because he's been my favorite running back for the last three years. I, I was disappointed when he got suspended, you know, last year, this year, whatever it was, the situation was. But I'm biased on this because I understand what he brings to the team. He is as dominant a football player. I mean, listen, last time they played, these two teams came back. It was his first game back from suspension. He averaged eight yards a carry mm-hmm. in that game. He caught the ball at 34 yards receiving. He is the complete running back. And this time of the year, and I've played this time of the year, the hardest thing to stop is when an offense just leans on your defense with the, in the running game. And when they continuously pound you, not the passing game, but the running game. Le'Veon Bell would touch the ball at least 28 times this week. And he will pound that Kansas City defense up the middle, on the outside. It's demoralizing as a defense. I got to go with Le'Veon Bell as the guy. Now that the Cowboys segment's over, I'm all alone again. Yeah, you're by yourself. I'm by myself arguing for the importance of the quarterback. I'll take it. I'll take those. I'll take that argument. I'm so proud of you for not taking the easy argument. You lofting yourself up on that perch to take the hard argument. And then, by the way, I just take the true argument, Will. Oh, you know, you didn't take the true. I just take the true argument. argument. You got, you got, you got seduced by making the hard argument. Uh Oh, that would happen. Yeah, you got seduced away from the truth. Ben has to play well. Let's hear the truth. Exactly right. Come on. Let's see. First of all, can we also address before we get to the truth, which I will happily bring to the middle of the table in about fifty. 15 seconds. The absurd overstatement that you made that Le'Veon Bell is two standard deviations. Yeah, he's better than everybody. We might need you to define for the audience and me what a standard deviation is. <laughs> but two standard deviations yeah. better than next best running back? This argument's not Who's, to be by the way, David Johnson. Ju- just for uh, just yeah. for clarification. Right? Yeah, like he's also better than close. Zeke, who's a beast. Zeke's a beast, but there are two guys better than yeah, him. Yeah, and, and Le'Veon Bell is better than Johnson. So like there's Don't change your argument. There's one step to Johnson and another step Don't to Don't go from to hard Zeke. from Bell. Don't Bell, go from hard Johnson, to Zeke. No, two standard deviations. Yeah, we'll that's, count each one. That's nonsense. Step. That's crazy talk. Right. Le'Veon Bell's great. Zeke's great. David Johnson's oh, great. Oh, they're all about the same? It's close. Yeah, it's oh. close. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, they're asking those two guys to do it. Now, now that, I, now that I have the should-be right Hall of Famer on my side, at least on Antonio your, Brown's on your the overstatement, one that's we'll get to the else. truth now. The quarterback is almost always, in every scenario, the most important player mm-hmm. on the field. And in this scenario, despite how great Le'Veon Bell is, it is once again. Ben Roethlisberger is somehow, in my estimation, the most underrated quarterback of the past decade think about that because I think Romo is incredibly underrated as well. (laughs) But this guy has two Super Bowl wins and I feel like every time Roethlisberger is discussed, Breeze, 
Brady, Manning. You list four or five quarterbacks, and then goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Roethlisberger as well. The guy who has engineered game-winning drives in the Super Bowl to put two rings on that franchise's hand, that guy somehow is underrated. The, the Steelers need him to be good. They can count on Bell. Bell will be good. But Roethlisberger, despite me saying how great he can be, sometimes... Not so great. And recently, in this season, oh. in week 16, oh, Buffalo, I three interceptions. Now. Earlier in the season, Baltimore, week 16. I understand now. He's, he's not games. as good a quarterback as Bell is a running back. No. Therefore, he becomes more important because you can't important. rely on him to be good. He's is that the more important to the outcome of the game. His performance will oh. go more to determine you can't rely the outcome on as much. of the game. First, because you start talking about how great he is under pressure. Then you say you can't really rely on this him. This isn't hard. And now, because You're of that, he's guy. more important it's than Bell. It's not hard. You're a smart guy. When he's amazing, which is the most of the time, he is the most underrated quarterback in the league, with the exception of Romo. When he is bad, he affects the game in a bad way. So he is the most important More player. Right. I get what Once you're again, saying. Down, really I understand well, that. Well, that's he's fair. not always great, so he's more important. No, no you're saying that you can count on Le'Veon. We don't know necessarily who will show up against that defense for Ben Roethlisberger. That makes sense. No, I, I, look, I don't think his performance is going to be as greatly needed as he has in the past. I mean, this week, listen, he's, he's seeing uh, Justin Houston. He's seeing D Ford as pass rushers. Mm -hmm. He's seeing Tom Bali. He's going to, the, the crowd noise benefits that pass rush mm -hmm. from the Kansas City Chiefs. The only way you offset that is you run the ball to soften up the defense. That's, if you're just in passing situations and you're going to put Ben back there and say, okay, Ben, you throw the ball 70 times today, yep. and you with this pass rush that's coming at you, that's not a good look, especially with the pass rush and a secondary that's opportunistic. You have to but soften Dan, them up. But that's what they do. Yeah, they but, throw the yeah, ball. Watch this. And they did last last time they played, Dan, he, play, he played Dan, right I'm time. Ben Roethlisberger, okay? Yeah. Watch this. Hold this for a second. Here we go. That's it. That's all he's got it there. It's Le'Veon Bell. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that's not. It's Le'Veon Bell is having a day. You have to soften them up. He's defending the play. Antonio Brown's going to be in the How hard is that? Stop it. This guy on fire Two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. All you want him to do is hand the ball To your point, Roethlisberger is a great quarterback, in my opinion, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Kind of the guy you want. Mm -hmm. People like the cut of his jib as a quarterback since before he came in the league, right? I mean, like, he, everyone knew he was going to be a good pro, and it turns out he's a great pro. But they have him rated about right, Will. I, I think usually he's about a top five or six quarterback, and people usually have him ranked there. Behind not Rodgers, behind yes. Breeze. Well, he's not as good as Rodgers or Brady, and he wasn't as good as Peyton, but he was not so far away. And then the question usually comes down to whoever else is having a great season among the other very good quarterbacks and Breeze. And Roethlisberger usually fits in with, you know, not Brady, not Peyton until recently, not Rodgers, and then maybe him and Breeze and one other guy that season, and that name keeps changing. That's about right. That's not underrated. We got, we got to save that debate mm. for another day. You guys can't pick yet. Before we let you go, you're taking a short break. Who do you have in this one? Chiefs or Steelers? Chiefs or Steelers? I, you know what? I like, Steelers. Steelers. I like the Steelers, Steelers. in this okay. game on the road. Aaron like will be back with us in just a bit. He LeBron James was extremely frustrated after Tuesday's loss to the Jazz. LBJ was issued a technical in the first quarter when he shouted at referee Tyler Ford after being fouled by Shelvin Mack. When asked if his shouting was a result of the way he's been officiated lately, LeBron had this to say. You got technical today. It was pretty rare for you. Uh, yeah, I got fouled. Yeah. Has there been any um, frustration with the way, it is. It is. way you've been officiated lately? It is, but you know, I know what the main thing is. The main thing is to win, but it is. Uh, it is. Max, do you like the way LeBron is handling this? I do. As with most things, I like the way LeBron handles stuff. Um, I think that he has been such a solid citizen, and such uh, his his presence has been so beneficial to the league. I think he's um, established so much credibility as a solid citizen that. He's like uh, the captain of the football team or the valedictorian or, you know, the model student who has something to say to the, you know, vice principal, right? Like the vice principal has to actually listen to what they say respectfully or doesn't have to, but may be inclined to. I think that, that LeBron has legitimate beef. He's officiated differently. We all know mm -hmm. that. As Shaquille O'Neal once upon a time was. He's so big and strong and so fast, so powerful that if he's officiated within the rules, there's no, it's not even fair. And so they kind of bend the rules. Uh, and he doesn't get the whistles he should get. And at a certain point, and he hasn't complained about it, I wouldn't call LeBron a whiner about it, but at a certain point he's like, okay, you know, maybe it would be to my and my team's advantage if I just alert, the, raise the awareness of the fact that, you know, I really should be 
uh, officiated fairly. And because of his track record um, and because of what he means to the league, uh, as long as he does it respectfully, I think it will actually have a beneficial effect, the, the, intended, the intended effect from LeBron. I think he will be more likely, not less likely, to get the whistle. Let's start with what you're right on. You're right that LeBron doesn't get the calls he deserves. He suffers from the Shaq effect. He's bigger, stronger, faster, and flat out better than everybody else in the league. Defenders bounce off of him, refs don't call it. That's a fact. The question is this, how has he handled it? What'd you call him? The model student? Yes. Captain of the student That's body? Right. No, no, Pre football Student team. body president? He's what, he's, he's that, right. he's the kid that did everything right, right and has built credibility with the administration. Somehow you take his side of the argument and insult him along the way. How's he's that? He's more than that, man. He's the face of the well, NBA. Of course. He is the NBA. And that's why he's wrong to do what he did. Now, don't get me wrong. LeBron didn't step way over the line, but his toe is crossing it here. And here is why. LeBron is the NBA. Three reasons. Number one, as the face of the NBA, his job is to protect the integrity of the game. That is above and beyond himself. He has to look out for interests greater than LeBron. On James. It's flat out part of the job. If you go out looking for getting every single call right for you or complaining about officiating, you are thinking about yourself when you are actually bigger than yourself at this point. Number two, for consistency's purposes, he shouldn't be doing or saying anything close to this because he just a few weeks ago said he didn't like the NBA's two minute report. Kevin Durant said it throws the referees under the bus. LeBron said the same thing. He said, this makes it look like we don't support the refs. They do 48 minutes of decisions, and it looks like in the end we're second-guessing every one of them. Well, that's exactly what he's doing here. He's asking for doubt. He's asking for criticism on the referees. Is he wrong? No. The question is, is this the right way to do it? With a camera in your face, with the media scrum around you, that's not the right place to do it. So, the captain of the student body or yep. the president or whatever yep. the analogy was goes to the principal behind the scenes. He doesn't go to the front of the auditorium at a class assembly and go, you know what? This guy right, is don't torture, messed up. Don't torture the metaphor. The point is, I, mean, I think but, I'm hitting it pretty well. No, we're saying it fair way. Right, exactly. The point is that he is also a human being, and not every single decision he makes will be premeditated and for a pointed effect. It may be that in the moment he is also genuinely frustrated by the fact that the million times he didn't get the whistle and deserved it actually hurt his team. Also, the idea that you assert that you are the face of the league and therefore your responsibility is not to yourself, well, you have competing interests there at best. I mean, if you want to say he's the face of the league and therefore has some kind of extra responsibility yes, to... without that, a doubt. That, that, ...that supersedes his own personal interest and professional interest as an NBA player, where actually, ethically speaking, his interest has to be toward himself and his team. You know, maybe kind of loosely, realistically speaking, he also has a kind of higher unspoken responsibility to the league, but that doesn't supersede his own ethical responsibility Look, to himself and his team. You keep making arguments as though LeBron is a normal person or a normal player in the NBA. He's not. And he's that's how not, the refs are calling and it. When he's, he's trying great, to correct that. When he's great, we all laud him for his superhuman abilities. When he's doing something like this, we can't apply the normal standard to him again. We have to apply the same superhuman standard. So, so I just want to, for, clar for clarification. So, he not only needs a he needs to give you a handicap to begin with, like you're playing no, golf. No, you're, you're. But then, in addition Matt, to that, you're manipulating my argument. But I catch you in well, real that's time. What we're, that's what we're I'm doing. I'm not suggesting that he ha can't complain about the referees not getting the calls right. It's about how he does it. Go behind the scenes. Talk to the referees union. Talk how do you to the know NBA. He hasn't done that. Well, I don't, but I know what he at did certain, in front of the right, scenes. And at a certain point, this you is, make. Listen, Phil Jackson used to do this, coaches do this, players have done this. Matt, you think Michael Jordan never complained about a call? Every I mean, argument I've ever made when it comes to LeBron James yeah. is to hold him to the higher standard that he rightfully deserves. LeBron James should be held to a higher standard because he's great, because he's LeBron and James. And he has been held to a higher this standard, him, and he's passed with flying this colors. This makes him every other NBA player. This makes him normal. And by the way, it also makes him wrong in the end. Yes, he's not getting the calls, but it's small. The Cavs have lost three of their last five games not because of these calls. They've lost them because they turned the ball over more so than they had assists. Out, so, what you're pointing out is, like, so what you're pointing out is he may be frustrated for other reasons and therefore human is an enti as, and at, is entitled to vent his frustration like everybody at certain points in their lives, even if it's not the perfect time or place. Or what you're saying is not only should he be held to a different standard than everyone else in terms of the way it's officiated, but in addition to that, no, he that should be held not. to a different standard in terms of his ability to, uh, to look for 
or his remedy. grievances. He has a di he doesn't have a different standard. He shouldn't have a different standard on how he's officiated. On that, I think where he's sitting here, we all three agree that what we have a difference on is how he handles it. And yes, he should have a different standard. Rajon Rondo can go in front of a referee, go in front of a, a camera, and complain about the referees, and it's not going to go beyond his bounds because he's Rajon Rondo. But LeBron James is not. He's publicly, LeBron James. Publicly calling out officials, depending on how you do it and who you are, can have beneficial consequences to you and your team. I, I mentioned Phil Jackson before, but there have been other superstars in the NBA who have pointed out that officials haven't, you know, have been, either haven't blown the whistle or have blown the whistle when they shouldn't. And at times, the feeling has been, yes, that actually helped them. Don't, it raised awareness Don't about you it. find an inconsistency in the fact that he thinks the two-minute report undercuts the credibility of the NBA refs, but complaining about them in front of a camera doesn't? You don't no. find an inconsistency no, there? No, one is an official action by the league, and in spite of what you insist his unofficial position is, he is not actually the ambassador for the league when he is competing against another team. He's a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers He's and has a responsibility always. to his team. He's always the ambassador of the league. Again... Just for clarification, doesn't, it's not that the referees are right. It's not that he doesn't have a right to complain. It's how he does it. The captain of the student body, Max, goes to the vice principal's office. Oh, after. Just for clarification, it's not that you're right. We're bringing it full circle.